This is my grandmother, by the way. A beverage in a jar with ice and a straw and lipstick on the straw is Grandma Prue. I took that in a much more surreal way. Yeah. <laughs> like, this jar. No, but Grandma's still with us. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like the spirit of her? Yeah, the, is, it, this is my grandmother. Like, she is here with us today. All iced coffee from this moment forward will be referred to as Prue. <laughs> Grandma, I love you. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Home Movies. I'm Allison Roman, and today we are making one of David's favorite desserts, banana cream pudding. This isn't just any banana cream pudding, this is a coconut banana cream pudding. And even if you don't enjoy overly coconutty things, I still feel like you will enjoy this because the coconut flavor is pretty subtle and it's really there uh, in the form of coconut milk just to kind of lighten up the pudding. For banana pudding lovers and coconut lovers and coconut indifferent, people. This is for you. The coconut agnostic. Yeah, thank you. I love pudding. David loves pudding. Just found that out mere minutes ago. Insert David here. <laughs> <laughs> this recipe first appears in my cookbook, Nothing Fancy. Also insert here. For each recipe in the book, I really gave it some thought of like, what would I serve at the end of a dinner party or at a picnic or whatever. And to me, like a giant bowl of layered pudding is sort of it. I think a lot of people think it's a banana flavored pudding. It's not. It's bananas, it's cream, and it's pudding. We're gonna start by making the pudding because the pudding needs to chill for at least an hour before we can assemble it. You can't assemble hot pudding and whipped cream and, and think it's gonna turn out well, because it simply will not. Once you do that, you can let the pudding hang out for a few days, and that will be the hardest thing that you do the entire time. It is the most annoying part of the whole process. It sucks, it's annoying, because you're cooking it over a hot stove, it's bubbling at you. You might like burn your arms. Uh, you, you will probably most certainly get it all over your stove or your countertops. Like it's, it's a kind of a messy process, but banana cream pudding is so, so good. It is absolutely worth it. And uh, we're gonna go for it. We interrupt this banana cream pudding video to, nope, that sounds like I'm depressed. We are gonna take a banana cream pudding pause a thing I just made up, so that I can tell you about a vitamin that I've been taking for years. It's called Ritual, and I love this vitamin because I feel like it has every single thing that I need and nothing I don't. And the reason I know this is because I can clearly see on the bottle and on their website exactly what I'm putting into my body. It's been the one thing that I feel like has been a true hallmark of me entering an adult phase of my life where I take a vitamin feels like very responsible. And this is what they look like. They come in this cute little clear jar. I don't know, I think it's cute. And they're just these little gel capsules. Honestly, I've been taking these for about three-ish years, maybe four. I don't know, I, basically since they've been around, I was like a very early adopter. They came on the market as soon as I realized that I needed to start taking a vitamin. It was very good timing. This is a serendipitous uh, sponsored situation, but it is a genuine situation. If you're curious at all and you'd like to give Ritual a try, you can head to ritual.com backslash Allison and enter the code Allison for 10% off your first three months, which I feel like is generally about the time that you'd need to say, yes, I like this. Yes, it's worth it. What have you got to lose? All right, let's make this pudding. So pudding in its most basic form is dairy. Um, here we're using heavy cream and coconut milk. Egg yolks, we're gonna use eight egg yolks here. Sugar and cornstarch. And cornstarch is to thicken it. Some people use flour. I find that it never really cooks out and you kind of, it always tastes like gummy and floury, but cornstarch just kind of makes it thick. I'm also gonna flavor this pudding with a little bit of brown sugar, which is gonna get added at the end. And that's just kind of adding like a complexity to the pudding that otherwise would just be like kind of one note. The butter gets added at the end and that's just to sort of add additional richness and help it set. It's gonna be that much thicker because you'll have that added body from the butter. And a very small pinch of turmeric. And that is because I like my banana cream pudding to look really yellow. I worked at a bakery once where we would add yellow food coloring to our banana cream pudding because you want your banana cream pudding to look yellow and vibrant. This is a totally superfluous addition. It doesn't make or break it. If you don't wanna add it, if you don't have any, do not go out of your way. It's not something that I do often. I almost never add something just for color, but this is like a very rare exception to the rule. Okay, so eight egg yolks. My separating technique is just to separate the egg yolk from the white in the shell. I don't like to use my hands. I find this to be like a very therapeutic task. One of the first things that I ever 
like remember doing in a kitchen is making ice cream base. I was taught to stack my eggshells like this, which is very like, tell me you're a Virgo without telling me you're, you're a Virgo. Did you know that also if you get egg yolk in your egg white, like if you're using these for meringue, you can always just take your eggshell and fish out the egg yolk. It's like a magnet. It's like the only way to get egg yolk out of your egg whites. It's pretty cool. Cornstarch, every time you use it, will just absolutely get everywhere. It's just a fact of life. And it's something that you have to accept, so. While you Aries out there, probably loving it. <laughs> you chaos freaks. <laughs> I'm an Aries uh, moon, so. That tracks. Yeah, I have like the neuroses of a Virgo with the chaos of an Aries and it is a blast. So I'm gonna put half of our sugar into this bowl and half of our sugar into this pot where I'll eventually add the dairy. So I'm gonna whisk this together and it looks really thick and sludgy at the start and like lumpy and weird, but it will smooth out and become really nice and thick. And as it sits, the sugar will start to dissolve slightly. You don't want to let it sit too much though because the sugar will eventually cook the egg yolk and we don't want that. You know you're done whisking when everything is just smooth and there's no like obvious lumps of sugar or cornstarch. <laughs> We're done here. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside while I do my dairy mixture. These egg whites I'm just gonna put in the fridge so I can uh, whip up some sort of cool omelet later. I'm using just like a regular four quart pot. Two cups of heavy cream. This heavy cream is so heavy, oh my God. As you can see, me putting it into this container, totally unnecessary. Waste of my time. And I dirtied something in the process, so feel free to just skip that step if you're at home watching. And know that one pint is two cups. I'm gonna add coconut milk. Shake well before using. And you want full fat coconut milk. Do not use the fat-free or reduced fat coconut milk. It will not work. This is not the time. I don't know that it's ever the time. So I'm gonna whisk that together. I'm gonna to add a small amount of turmeric, of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I haven't made this in a really long time. I'm actually thrilled. Don't go overboard on the turmeric. Right now, it doesn't look like much, but once it heats and cooks with the egg yolks, it's gonna sort of like activate and turn a very, very vibrant yellow. So we are heating all of this stuff over like a medium heat. We basically want this to just come to a bare simmer and then we're gonna temper it in with our thickened egg yolk mixture. Return it back to the pot and that's where it becomes a pudding. I should mention if you didn't have coconut milk or you really, really don't like the flavor, you can definitely just use regular milk. And if you don't have heavy cream, you can also use a full total of uh, half and half. Like there's a lot of flexibility here. Okay, so once our pudding is properly thickened and we're about ready to chill it, I'm gonna add brown sugar and butter. And the reason these ingredients are added after, not before, um, brown sugar has acid in it. And when you add brown sugar to dairy, it basically curdles the dairy. So adding this after it's been thickened and stabilized is going to season it with a flavor of brown sugar without running the risk of acidulating the milk and curdling it. The more you know. We are almost here. We're basically looking for this to start steaming. I'm trying to see if you can see it. No, I mean, you can just tell, like your pot is, is very hot. This milk, she's hot. And now I'm going to slowly put this into the egg yolk mixture. You can use a ladle if you want. And this is called tempering. And if I were to pour this whole thing into the egg yolk mixture, you run the risk of cooking the egg yolks um, rather than gradually heating them. Anytime you're working with raw egg yolks and fat or heat or whatever, you wanna just kind of like be cognizant of not shocking them. You wanna treat them gently. So most of our milk mixture has been added to the egg yolks. Everything is very smooth and delightful. And now I'm just gonna add the rest of this back to the pot. This is, you know, again, annoying, but you do have to sort of babysit the pudding the whole time. And see, it's already a really nice yellow color. It's not obnoxiously yellow, but it reminds me of bananas. And that's always the goal, to be reminded of bananas. And sort of as soon as you see that first bubble pop up, that's when we know that it's properly thickened. Cornstarch needs to, and flour, and most thickeners need to uh, reach the boiling point for it to be properly thickened and activated and kind of cooked out that starchy flavor. So doing this more gradually, lower and slower, and whisking constantly to make sure that nothing's cooking on the bottom is really important. And sometimes you just, I like let it sit and I'm like, oh, am I seeing a bubble? Is it boiling yet? I'm a scientist. See, it's boiling. You boil it for like a minute just to make sure that 
the whole mixture has come up to that temperature, and it has, I'm gonna kill the heat. Taking it off the heat. Oh, I should have done this earlier. Ah! Quarter cup of brown sugar. And that butter. It smells really good already. Someone told me this was their favorite dessert that I've ever made and that they can't understand why not more people are making it, but it is not as easy as like a one bowl cake. And so we just whisk that, we, I, <laughs> until all that sugar is dissolved and all the butter has melted, which it has, because this is hot as hell. So now we're gonna pour it into this baking dish. I find it to be really useful instead of pouring it back into a bowl where it's very deep, spreading it into a baking sheet where it's flat is just gonna make it cool down so much quicker. So you'll have pudding sooner. Damn, I'm pumped to eat this, to be honest. <laughs> and the next thing we'll do is put plastic wrap on top of this because already you can see like pudding likes to form a skin, a really gross term that for whatever reason we apply to pastries, that rubbery, chewy sort of top layer and putting plastic wrap directly on top of the pudding as it cools sort of prevents that from happening. So you just wanna press directly on top of it like that. And honestly, the feeling of hot pudding beneath a layer of plastic wrap, you have not lived. Oh my God. It's weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, feel it. It's It's like, it's very hot. Slightly gackish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the fridge to chill. It will take at least an hour, but if you can give it more time, that is great too. And we will see this later, um, when all we'll have to do is whip our cream, cut our bananas, and assemble our pudding. Okay, our pudding is chilled. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. The only other thing we really have to do is whip our cream. Um, if you remember from key lime pie, <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. I like to cut my heavy cream with yogurt. The reason I do it is not for any other reason other than I truly find it more enjoyable to eat and I feel like I can eat more of it. I'm gonna whip two cups of heavy cream first and unlike that first time, I'm just gonna pour it directly from here because I know this is two cups. <laughs> you said, David. <laughs> David said that I only like things if they're hard, <laughs> like to do, like I can't enjoy something if it's easy. And like case in point, this thing, where like I have a KitchenAid, it's literally right there next to an outlet. Why am I like this? I'm not honestly trying to prove anything. I just, I, I thought, I forgot how much harder it is to do two cups of cream as opposed to one cup. The cream is whipped. So we had two cups of cream. I whipped it to medium stiff peaks. Then I added a half cup of powdered sugar and then one cup of full fat Greek yogurt. And I'm just gonna whisk it. This pudding feeds a lot of people. It's kind of like not worth it to make banana cream pudding for fewer than like a group of 20. It has like a slight peak. It's like thick, but still spoonable and soft. And again, small pinch of salt. We're gonna slice bananas and toss them in some lime juice. And that does two things that prevents them from oxidizing. Um, you could also use lemon juice if you like, but I think lime and coconut go really nicely together. <laughs> the acidity that you add to the bananas kind of make this whole thing a little bit more well seasoned. Everything kind of feels like a more complete dessert rather than just like sweet flavors. And you don't want to slice them too thick. I've seen some people when doing banana cream pudding like kind of slice them really long ways. I've also seen people do this. Which I don't like because when you when you go into it, the bananas break and like make the pudding all crazy. Yeah, so like honestly, I'm like a fan of just old fashioned, like slight bias. We're talking a quarter inch thick, not too thin. If they're too thin, they just sort of end up disappearing into the pudding, which is maybe your goal. It's not my preference, not to brag, but these bananas are kind of perfect. They are firm, but also obviously ripe. As a kid, I would like peel these off and like save them. Isn't that weird? I'm so gross. Now that's a lime. I've heard that if you are having trouble with limes, you can microwave it and it'll give you more juice. 
I just toss these. The juice will get all over them. You can taste one. Hmm. Limey. Pudding time. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> So satisfying. It's like doing a face mask. Vanilla wafers are such a good cookie. They remind me of my grandma. You could do this in anything you wanted. If all you had was something like this, I would transfer your pudding to a bowl and then layer it in here. And a lot of people like to serve the banana pudding in like a big dish. I like to do mine in a big bowl, almost like a trifle. I'm gonna do it uh, a layer of pudding, a layer of wafers, a layer of bananas and a layer of whipped cream, and then just repeat. Uh, pudding. Um. <sighs> no, I know, I just already built the top layer. I think I would do like wafers, pudding, banana, cream. It's just so it doesn't go cream pudding. Like there's like a vanilla or a banana between the layers of cream and pudding. I should have written it that way. Cookbooks, they're imperfect, just like all of us. Slippery little suckers. I suppose you could do this with like a spoon, but to me, it's like an experience that you should have with your hands. Nothing but you and the bananas. And cream. I think that the mistake I always make with these layered desserts is that I always put more on the bottom so that by the time I come around to like finishing it off, I'm like, oh, I should have uh, saved some more of that. So I'm not gonna repeat that mistake. Annoyingly, this should sit for a while. And like it kind of needs to like settle into each to itself. All right, last of the bananas. And then we top this with whipped cream. Mmm, looks so good. All right, and it's done. I'm gonna let it chill. Welcome back to part three of banana cream pudding. We have made the pudding, we've assembled the pudding, we've and it's pudding. Pudding. Hot pudding. Pudding. Pudding waits for nobody. What even is a pudding? <laughs> Saying that word many times is a trip. You can garnish this with whatever you want. You can also leave it completely uh, uh, natural. But I like to garnish it with just a little cherry. Boop. But how cute is that? I find it like very funny and almost like more appealing. This austere. And um, this is the kind of dessert that I would suggest people just like get a bunch of bowls and go to town on, depending on how close you are with these people, but I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it. I wanna mention that this has been sitting for about 12 hours. So minimum two hours and that allows like everything to kind of like settle into each other, soften the cookies a bit. Anything over 36 hours, you get into really kind of mushy territory, but maybe you like that. After all, it's a bowl of pudding. What could possibly go wrong? So when you get in there, you can see like all the nice little layers. The bananas are soft, but have texture. The cookies are soft, but have texture. But the pudding and the whipped cream are just soft. It's like subtle texture. Imagine having any sort of dinner party or doing anything and like at the end of the night, this comes out. Oh my God, pinch me. Prove, give me strength. <laughs> what an unexpected bit. <laughs> My not deceased grandmother as iced coffee bit is really doing a lot this morning.